stuff we don't even know what it is. What would you do if it failed? I was hoping one of you guys knew. Rich to lean threshold. I think I know what that is. The opposite. Low voltage for switch time calculate. Uh -huh, that sounds confusing. High voltage. Oh, I know what that is. That's the opposite of that. You know, what, this is mode 5 slash 6. Rich to lean switch time calculations. Lean to rich switch time calculate. Half cycle count. Oh, half cycle. I, I don't know if I could live if I didn't know what the half cycle was. Right? So big slope. Oh, the big slope. This is apparently a western oxygen sensor out in Idaho somewhere. All right, look at these things that this mode 5 slash 6 test for. Rich vote test, I can do that. <laughs> I got one. Uh, right? Can't we test oxygen sensors see if they go rich enough? Isn't that what we were just talking about? Yeah. Oh, lean vote. We can do that one. We can do that one. Switch. Oh, shoot. Here it comes again. Switch ratio test. Amplitude test. I know that in, in electronic talk, these are the same. Uh, sw okay, switching thing. 19 different tests or more. This computer tests the crap out of this oxygen sensor. I, I want to entertain something to you, then we're going to have to go on break or I'll be talked about. I want to entertain to you. If you're not using mode 6, don't hesitate another moment. Start using it the first thing on the first car you get. So we're rocking and rolling. The speed of the oxygen sensor is how fast it goes from rich to lean or lean to rich. The reaction time is how fast it goes and turns around and it switches. Now, we can look at that. We can look at speed, but we can't look at speed this way, but we can look at speed in another way. We'll show you that in a second. Reaction time, does this reaction time kind of look symmetrical? Yeah, it all looks the same and it kind of looks normal if you're using a digital storage scope and you have a one second sweep rate. If you're using a one second sweep rate, whatever, if you're using a 500 millisecond like Delphi teach, uh, Delco teaches, it's going to look different. Your switch times are going to look faster. All right. So this is, a, this is a brand new car. This is a brand new car and a brand new oxygen sensor. And does it go rich enough? Does it go lean enough? Switch ratio is you're going to compare it to another sensor. And heater operation is uh, uh, timed activity. So we can do some things. Just make sure that your fuel trim is within somewhat normal working ranges before you go testing your oxygen sensor. You don't want the oxygen sensor to be shifted rich, bias rich, Shifted lean, bias lean, you really want long-term fuel trims to be somewhat normal to test an oxygen sensor. Now here's how you test for the speed of an oxygen sensor. You watch it do its switch cycle, and somewhere as it's halfway down, you whack the throttle. By the time the fuel gets burned and exhausted, the oxygen sensor sees it. It should respond instantly to the rich condition, lack of oxygen condition. So how fast is it? Can you see the graticule going up the side of it? That's how fast it is. Now, this is actually a waveform from 1988 when I first started doing oxygen sensor waveform analysis. Some people have fudged it since then. They said, oh, I can, as long as it's fast enough within one-tenth. No, bull, cockapoo. They got to be instantly... And the newer the car is, the faster it has to be. So that's what slowness does. If this oxygen sensor, when it sees a rich condition, goes up and it ends up over here somewhere instead of where it should be straight up, that means the computer didn't see the results of its enrichment fast enough so it made it richer, causing the vehicle to run too rich. Fast enough is instantaneous. Anything else is somebody made up who didn't do the research? Questions on that? All right, you can do the rear oxygen sensor also. We know that if we look at the rear oxygen sensor, it kind of hangs out flat, and it can be lean or it can be rich. It doesn't really matter where it's at. It can be flat. When compared to the front oxygen sensor, it looks flat. It is flat, and that means it's working the way it's supposed to. If you whack the throttle, is it fast enough? Does it go straight up? The only difference in the uh, oxygen rear and front is not when it goes and sees a rich condition. 
It's when it sees a lean condition. The rear oxygen sensor has a delayed reaction to the front oxygen sensor. I'm going to tell you this and please use it correctly. I am saying general motors and general motors only. The longer the delay time is, the higher the catalytic efficiency. Now if you look at a Chrysler, and Chrysler's kind of react like this, if this was a Chrysler, the front oxygen sensor sees the end of the rich condition or sees the lean condition and it responds and Chrysler walks way out here with their rear up to like 1.7879 seconds later. That doesn't mean it's got a good catalytic, good catalytic converter. It means it's a Chrysler, whatever they're doing. Apparently they use zychronia dioxide from Jersey. I don't know. They're not getting it where the other guys are getting it. So, Fuel control, the oxygen sensor has got to be within normal uh, working parameters, which means that the fuel system is in good control. Uh, the computer is capable of correcting any fuel issues. The oxygen sensor reacts to do not screw this up. I know you've heard it probably 50 times. You're going to hear 51. The oxygen sensor reacts to the oxygen in the exhaust gas. The oxygen sensor drives short-term fuel trim. Short-term fuel trim reacts to the oxygen sensor. Short-term fuel trim drives the long-term fuel, uh, fuel trim. Long-term fuel trim reacts to the short-term fuel trim. You've heard it 50, 60 times. Do not forget that. It's got to be right here when you're diagnosing rich and lean conditions. What does what? When, when you're diagnosing, aren't you looking for someone to blame? Something to blame? Right? Bah! You're out of here. Bob, call no auto parts available, commonly referred to as Napa. Hey, yeah, that works. They don't have it, but where's it at? They don't have any parts at NAP Auto Parts, but where's it at? It's at the warehouse, and we can have it for you tomorrow. Okay, we're, same NAPA we got in Indiana. There we go, in Indiana. Yeah. So we're looking for something to change, whack with a hammer, do something too, straighten out, bend. We're looking for somebody to blame. And if you forget that order, you're going to change the wrong part, all right? So the oxygen sensors uh, can only be normal if you have good fuel control. Damn, are we sure that's right? Because I know for a fact fuel control will only be good if the oxygen sensors are good. Which way is it? Gentlemen, it's both ways. You can't have good fuel control without good oxygen sensors. You can't have good oxygen sensor signals without, with bad fuel control. If you're running rich, the oxygen sensor isn't going to have a good signal. It's going to be rich. Right? So, what do you do? I mean, how do you differentiate these two? Can you absolutely, positively test long-term fuel trim? Don't pretend. No pretending. Just because you went on break, the rules stay the same. Yes. Yeah, well, I could do some stuff and know some stuff when I'm done, but that's not what I asked you. Can you absolutely test long? No. Can you absolutely test oxygen sensors? Yes. So test the one you can add. Don't pretend. Do the one you know you can do. Does it go rich enough? Does it go lean enough? Is it fast enough? Rich enough is point nine or above. Lean enough is point one or below. Fast enough is instantaneous. All right. Yeah, I don't. If you got bad fuel control, Test an oxygen sensor. It only makes sense in the world, right? And don't forget, the, we're going to add the modifiers in a minute. Don't forget all the modifiers. Uh, short, sense, short term is driven or reacts to oxygen sensor is dependent upon them being good. Sense long term is, is driven or reacts to short term, we got to have short term correct. What's long term got to have to be correct? They're pretending. What? Oh, okay. And I, I accept that, Chris. I accept that 
You know, if short term's got to have a good oxygen sensor, long term's got to have a good computer because it is a computer program. Remember the stupid thing I wrote on the screen? Do you had a broken long term field trim? You had a broken OBD2? I, it may be stupid, but I'm trying to make points. Stop pretending. Some of this crap we don't know. We just don't know. Go with what you know. Don't you like fix 80% of the cars that show up in your shop without blinking an eye? It's just some redundant, stupid problem. Whether the guy before you fix it or the guy behind you can fix it, well, it doesn't matter. 80% of the time we fix these things half asleep. We don't, we don't even think. And what kicks our butt is that 80% because then what 15% arose in, it's a little bit harder. You're going to have to do something extraordinary. You're going to have to inference with somebody. Hey, Bob, you ever seen this before? That's inferencing. You know. So uh, call, how many people call I did not fix? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't fix. Yeah, we're going to inference with something. The trouble is when the car comes in, there's not a big 15% on the door. So if you stop pretending, and I could, you know, what words do you want me to use? If you stop thinking you know, if you stop thinking you understand, if you stop thinking, uh, if you stop thinking you're better than you are, <laughs> that would help. <laughs> That's where I go wrong. I think I can get hung, any, you ever get hung up on something and you just determine that it is and you're going to prove that's wrong and an hour later it ain't? I do, I do that. I am guilty of that. I'm an expert at that because I know I can't be wrong. And then when I prove myself wrong, I go, damn, that's the first time. <laughs> today, today. Today. So the bottom line here is a changing of the injector on time when always fuel control goes way beyond the correction factor. Fuel control is a factor within the fuel control. It starts with key on engine off. Don't we set the starting injector pulse width then? And what's that based off of? RPM? Oh, no, no, there's no RPM. Would map divided by barrel be involved in that? Yeah, okay, so half the basic, but most of the modifiers. What sets the injector pulse width on time at key on engine off is basically part of the formula. So when we get to the formula, the formula is everything, and I know you've heard me just spit that formula out. I remember it, I know it, I, I, I will not forget it, because if I forget it, then I'm working on a comeback. You ever get a comeback? Never, Never Chris? What, uh, what's worse? <laughs> I lie, too. What, what's <laughs> I'm married, of course I lie. What's worse than a comeback? Leave. Never leave. Never left, all right? They're just part of fuel control. The bottom line is the injector pulse width, engine RPM divided by maximum engine RPM times manifold absolute pressure divided by barometric pressure is the basic injector squirt. It is it. Now, is it always it? No, at key on engine off, we don't have RPM. We don't care about the maximum RPM at that time, so we're working with only half of the basic formula. That makes sense? Because it doesn't stop there. The multipliers have to be considered. Remember what they wrote on the board? Don't miss anything. Note, barrel is a factor because of altitude. We talked about that questions. All right, so the multipliers are, as an example, system voltage. I have, in fact, tried to help people on the phone. I've helped people in the, I'll be standing next to them. We look at the same scan data. And I say, do you see anything wrong? And they go, no, I told you it was all normal. I said, what's that noise? And they go, what do you mean? I don't hear it. I go, no, that noise. Sounds like the engine's running. They go, it is. I go, and you got like 12.9 battery voltage? Is that right? without even knowing what the spec is for the, I didn't even give you a specific car, we know that ain't right. They're, 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 the injectors and the coils are electric devices. They don't work so good with less electricity. They work less, all right? So another modifier would be that the engine temperature sensor, how important is that? Very important sometimes. Is it important all the time? 
Oh, I disagree with you. Well, it's not. After this car warms up and closes loop, it's not important. 